All right, so today I want to talk about a feature of iTerm where you have file references in your command output. For example, right here, I ran a linter on Docker files. And if I hold down the command key and scroll through the various file references, I can click on this. And this will open this up by default with the default tool that would open this file on your machine. But one of the problems I have with this, if I look at the file explorer, you can see I don't have a folder opened up. I just have this individual file. And a lot of times when I'm working with files, especially if I'm using VS Code, I want to look at the entire repository of files that are related to the file that I opened up, because there might be something else that I want to look at that's nearby. So that is the default configuration of a feature. If I come to the preferences, go to profiles, pick my profile, and then go to the advanced tab. This is the default setting here to open with the default app. And this is under a feature known as semantic history. So basically in the history of your command output, can we parse things here and find some semantics that indicate that there's a file that's being referenced that you could then command click to open up? Now, thankfully, there are some choices here to override and configure this. For example, if you want, you could specify a specific editor. If you have a favorite code editor, these are the ones that are available on my machine, so I could pick any of these. Or I like the feature where you can come down and choose to run a command, whatever command you want. And here is the command that I use by default. Basically, I point at a script on the file system. And then at the end of this, I have a reference here to some arguments that you can pass that includes the file name, the line number, some of the text before and after where you clicked, and then also your working directory. So you can use all of those bits of information then to dispatch and open up a file however you see fit. And with a script, you have a lot of flexibility. So let's take a look at the script I have. So once I've set that, now, when I click to open up a file, you can see I open up the entire repository. This is sitting in an examples repository, and I can show you that at the command line. If I print out my path, you can see I'm sitting inside of the examples repository right now. And so that file is nested inside of there. So now I have all the files that are nearby. All right, so let's hop over to my dot files. And to show this off, I could use the ag command here and look for the word advanced. I believe that's what I named the file. So I need to do dash G. There's the file for the script. That's what I had in iTerm in the preferences. So I can command click to open that up. It takes me right to this file. Again, I'm inside of my dot files in this case. So I've got the dot files repo opened on the left. All right, so in this particular script, don't need to go through all of this. You're welcome to look at this out of my dot files repo on GitHub. But basically I'm running a fish script here. I've got some notes about the various parameters. I've got a function here that dispatches VS Code based on the location of the code executable, so I don't have to have this in my path. And then down below, I do some troubleshooting here to print out some information if something goes wrong. For example, if I want to show you that, if you're creating one of these scripts, if something goes wrong, so I'll simulate a problem there by exiting with a non-zero exit code back over at the command line. Now if I command click on one of the files that are referenced, you can see I get this little pop-up that says there's a bit of a problem here. And if I want, I can choose to view the command that I term dispatched. So this is the actual command, and this is the output here. You can see the debug statements I have in the output with args 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. And that's coming from my script right here when I loop through the various input parameters. So if you're troubleshooting one of these, just note that you have that available to figure out what's going wrong. If everything goes right, though, you're not going to get any sort of dialogue. So basically, I parse the various arguments, like the clicked path, which is the file or a directory, the line number, and then I also use the working directory. So down below here, I test to see if it's a directory. And if it is, I go ahead and open that with the open command, which will open it with finder. Let me show you that here. If I just list out the files inside of here, I'll open up the install directory. You can see that opens with finder then. After that, I look at the MIME type. And I do that because if I run across a PDF, I want to open that with preview. So again, I use the open command in that case. Same thing with images. I don't want to open those with VS Code. And then down toward the bottom, I take a look at a couple of things. First off, I check to see if I'm inside of a repository. If I am, then I get the repository root. So the examples directory or the dot files directory, that top level repo directory. If I'm not in a repository, I go with just the current working directory. And then after that, I call VS Code and I ask to open up that directory, either the repository top level directory or the working directory. 
and I say open up this particular file within that context. So this directory dictates what shows inside of VS Code when I look at the file explorer. So yeah, that's my little iTerm semantic history script. Again, in the preferences come under your profiles. This is specific to a profile, so if you use multiple profiles, you have to consider changing this in all of them or whichever ones you find it applicable for. And then come under the advanced tab and set the semantic history. And again, at the end there, you have the various arguments. And if you really want to set one of these up, I've got some notes in my script that explain some issues that I've run into and some caveats with regards to escaping spaces. So you might want to take a look at that.